Uh, this video concerns a two sample test, but this time concerning two different proportions. Uh, for the first sample, 19 out of 161 are successes, meaning that they contain coliform bacteria. In the second sample, 22 out of 95 are successes. Uh, so the first part of the question, which uh, I'll deal with the second part later, the first part, can we conclude that the la larger particles, 90 to 95 microns, are more likely to contain coliform bacteria? Okay, so this one concerns uh, two different proportions. So our null hypothesis will be that the two proportions are the same. And so that the difference between them is zero. The alternative hypothesis will be that the two proportions um, are different, and in particular, that the second one, the bigger particles, um, are contain more bacteria than the first, so that when I subtract the small ones from the big ones, I get something that's less than zero. Um, we remember that for future reference, that here the first sample is going to be the ones with the smaller particles, and the second ones will be the ones with the bigger particles. There's nothing particularly magic about this convention. I'm just going to choose that convention and run with it. Um, it is perfectly okay to make the bigger particles group 1 and the smaller particles group 2. We just have to remember to keep a convention and stick with it for the entire problem. Okay, so uh, now that we have the hypothesis testing set up, our test statistic is going to be Z. This is a proportion problem, and so we always default to the bell curve. And so our test statistic is going to be the observed difference minus the expected difference divided by the standard error for the difference. And this time the standard error for the difference is going to be equal to square root of uh, p hat times q hat times 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2. And in this formula, remember that the p hat and the q hat are pooled. In other words, we need to use both of these figures to determine the values of p hat and q hat under the assumption that uh, the proportions are going to be the same for the two samples. Okay, so let's start turning the crank with this. Um, here's the data. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. So we had 19 successes out of 161 for the first sample and 22 successes out of 95 for the second sample. So our proportions will be uh, A1 divided by A2, so 11.8% for the first group, and for the second group, the proportion would be 23.2%. Uh, so that'll be the values of P1 hat and P2 hat. To get the value of P hat that's pooled, I don't use this one and I don't use this one, I really use both. So I find the total number of successes divided by the total number of attempts. 161 plus 95 is 256. And so the total number of attempts is equal to about 16 percent. Okay, so using the information that we have here, our value of z is going to be equal to the first proportion minus the second proportion minus zero divided by the standard error for the proportion, which will be the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat times 1 over 161 plus 1 over 95. Okay, so we have um, the first proportion minus the second proportion over the square root of p hat times q hat times 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2. So our value of z works out to be negative 2.395. Okay, at this point, there are two possibilities that we can use to proceed. Uh, let's just do them both in order. The first one is by looking at the critical value. The critical value in this case is left-tailed 
So I need the value under the bell curve so that 5%, our default value of alpha, lies to the left. And so using Excel, Z critical will be equal to norm S inv of 0.05, which is negative 1.64485. And this divides the cutoff so that on this side, my decision would be to retain the null hypothesis. While on the other side, the decision would be to reject the null hypothesis. And clearly our value of negative 2.3935 falls in the rejection region, and so my decision is to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the second way of proceeding would be to figure out the p-value, which would be the area to the left of negative 2.3935. So using Excel, the p-value would be equal to norm s dist of this number. Using a TI calculator, it would be the area norm, normal CDF from negative 10 to the 99 to negative 2.3935. And we get a p-value of 0 0.0083. And clearly, the area that I shaded in blue is less than the area that I shaded in red. The p-value is less than alpha. And so my decision would be to reject the null hypothesis because there'd be about one chance in maybe oh, 120 or so of seeing a p-value, uh, of seeing a test statistic this extreme or more extreme. And so regarding the first question, can we conclude that the larger particles are more likely to contain coliform bacteria? The answer is yes. So we reject the null hypothesis. It appears that the larger particles are more likely to contain coliform bacteria. Uh, the second part of the problem concerns the power of the test. Find the power of the test if 10% of the smaller bacteria, of smaller particles, and 20% of the bigger particles contain coliform bacteria. Uh, to do this, let me uh, we note that the form of the alternative hypothesis is that the difference is less than zero. And so let me clear off some space and let me put up the formula for the power. Okay, so there's the uh, formula that we need to use. Um, it's quite complicated, uh, much more complicated than computing uh, beta for the um, case where we had uh, the Z curve before because I have two different samples to worry about. Okay, so on the screen we not, right now, let me point this out before I forget, what we have here is the formula for beta. And of course, uh, one the power will be 1 minus beta after we're all done. Okay, so this is a very complicated looking formula, so we just have to be very careful on how we compute this. So let's just be uh, start from the beginning and hope we don't make a mistake when uh, computing this. Here we have n sub 1 would be equal to 19, or would be equal to 95. Sorry, n sub 1 would be equal to 161. n sub 2 would be equal to 95, the size of the second sample. Uh, p sub 1 is going to be 0 0.1. p sub 2 would be equal to 0 0.2. And the value of alpha, well, we had a 5% test before, so my alpha will still be equal to 0.05. And I believe that was everything that we need to do this problem. Then we just have to be very careful when turning the crank and doing the computations. So starting off, our value of sigma in the formula will be equal to the square root of p sub 1, which is 0.1, times p q sub 1, which is 0.9, divided by 161, plus um, 
q sub 2, which is 0 0.2, times q sub, uh, p sub 2 is 0 0.2, q sub 2 is 0 0.8, divided by uh, 95. Now we notice that under the alternative hypothesis, we don't assume that the two p's are equal. So this is unpooled as opposed to the pooled um, problem that we had before. So our value of sigma is going to be different now. It's going to be 0 0.047. 363. Okay, then we have the values of uh, p that are on top. So p line is going to be equal to n sub 1 times p sub 1 plus n sub 2 times p sub 2 divided by n sub 1 plus p sub 2. So this would be the expected number, uh, expected proportion of successes under these two different proportions. And of course, q line would be equal to the difference between them. 1 minus p line. OK, so now we have this. So I can come back up here. So what is the thing inside the parentheses? The thing inside the parentheses, well, first off, I need z alpha, so z sub alpha is going to be equal to norm s inv of 0.95, so that 5% of the area lies to the left and 95% of the area lies to the right, so I get 1.644854. We remember that for always the z sub alphas, if alpha is less than a half, is always going to be positive. Negative z sub alpha is negative, but uh, z sub alpha itself is positive. Okay, so let's now figure out the thing in the parentheses. We have negative z sub alpha, and put this left parentheses, negative z sub alpha times the square root of p line times q line times the square root of 1 over 161 plus 1 over 95, and that ends the square root minus the hypothesized difference between the two proportions, which would be 0.1 minus 0.2, divided by the sigma, which is this. And so the thing inside of the parentheses would be equal to negative 2.18524. And so the value of beta is going to be the area to the right of that number. So 1 minus norm s dist of that number, giving a fairly large value of beta, 0.9855. This number is large because the p1 and p2 that we chose here are not that different than the observed proportions that we saw, which were 11.8% and 23.15%. So because the p1 and p2 that we chose are not that different from what was experimentally measured, we're not surprised that the value of beta that we got is quite large. Uh, finally, the power would be equal to 1 minus beta, and so that would be equal to 0 0.01444. So the power of the test works out to be 1.44%, which is it's not surprising that we see such a small number because the hypothesized values of P1 and P2 are not very different than what was actually measured.